Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into Spearville, Kansas. Play-in games, the second day of them just getting started here. And again, folks, just the two games here today, Satana and Kiowa County, the first one. Spearville and Buckland will be the next one. That one will be at about 445. There's two other games going on at the moment or are getting ready to tip off. We will update you on those as we get the updates throughout today. South Central and Ashland, that one in cold water as that's the 5-12 matchup. And then the 6-11, and 11, Mineola is hosting Ingalls. That is out in Mineola. So we will update you as we get updates on those. We will keep you informed all day long. The game in front of you here is the 7-10 seed, and if you're wondering why the other two, the high seeds, are hosting, and here Satana is coming to Spearville to play Kiowa County, the league officials I found out this morning decided that they did not want to make a team have to drive two hours, Kiowa County drive two hours to go all the way out to Satana into the snowstorm that they thought if they played them first here, there would be a window to get them in and get them out. So this the first matchup of the day. Satana is the seven seed, five and five on the year. They started the year four and one. Since then, they've fallen off a little bit. They've lost their last three, Buckland, Mead, and South Gray. Buckland and Mead, they lost both of those by 12. South Gray, they got beat by 19 in Montezuma. And then on Kiowa County side, they struggle to start the year. They start one and seven. They've won their last two, Kinsley and Ashland. Ashland, they beat them by 18, Kinsley by 14. We're set to go underway, and it was the two guys in the middle going to be the story in this one here today. Brady Dieterding for Kiowa County, averaging almost 25 a night, averaging almost 30 points a game since Christmas break. And then for Satana, it's number 33, Case and Anthony. Dieterding going to start with it. That's Brady. His brother's the point guard, number three. Satana's got three guys that average at least nine a game, and Case and Anthony's their leading scorer, averaging almost 13 a night. Miramontes with it here. Kiowa County coming out in a zone. They'll skip it backside, deflect it out of bounds. And it will stay with Satana. Manrique is set to trigger it in. 7.25 to go, just getting started. They lob it in. Anthony and Dieter didn't get to pick one up. Going up over the top. So Brady picks up his first. And that one thing, Kiowa County, their bench only about six, seven guys deep most of the time. Coach Hoffman did not like the foul call on Brady. Manrique is set to trigger in. We'll do it underneath. This Wagner will kick it out. Satana's a team that likes to play really fast, and they're going to press all day long, all tournament long, all year long. And they're going to try to turn their defense into offensive. They'll come right side with it now. Manriquez, they'll come up top to Kiowa County in kind of a 2-1-2, 2-3 maybe inside. Oh, my goodness. No, not going to go, though. Jeremiah Thompson there will clear the board for Kiowa County, looking to run quick. Dieterding to the corner. Sawyer Campbell shots blocked. Saved right underneath. Dieterding plus the foul. That Brock. So set to get it in, or excuse me, Dieter Ding with the end one. Brock gonna go to the line for one shot, the sophomore. Yeah, gonna be off the back iron, no good. Anthony, the board. Brock has had some uh, trouble shooting so far this year. Only about 10% from beyond the arc. Campbell the board. Kyra County looking to run here, trying to beat Satana at their own game early. Thompson tried to dump it underneath to Campbell and uh, just too close together. Manriquez will skip it backside here. This Miramonte is now top of the key, Manriquez. All right, so I tried to dump it underneath the Wagner. It will stay with the Indians. Kiowa County in the orange, Satana in the white. 
6-10 to go first quarter. Four point lead, it's the Dieterding brothers for Kiowa County that have the buckets. Anthony, gonna get called for a double dribble, no basket. Case and Anthony there, the leading scorer this year for the Indians, averaging almost 13 a night. So now they'll work against the press. Dieterding into the middle, that's Brock with it. One handed pass, Thompson's layup is good. And Kiowa County's jumped out to a 6 0 start. Manriquez against that 2 3 zone. Satana, they don't shoot the three exceptionally well, which got to imagine that's why Kiowa County's starting in a 2 3 zone. Campbell, backside, Dieterding, deep three. This Brock missed everything. Oh, it bounced off of Wagner and ended up right in the arms of Sawyer Campbell. He's got two, four different Mavericks have scored and they lead it eight nothing here early. Spreading the wealth around for Kiowa County. As you see here, the one-handed pass with a little bit of backstop to Thompson. Eight nothing Kiowa County. Five twenty-five to go, first quarter. Four different Mavericks have scored. Both Dieter Dane brothers, Sawyer Campbell and Jeremiah Thompson. And it's all been inside. Miramontes will try to dump it underneath. Got through Manriquez, no good. Thompson clears the board into the ball game. Angel Munoz for Satana and Caden Westlow for Kiowa County as Jeremiah Thompson's got another one. That one gonna hit the floor up ahead. Brock Dieterding trying to run it down. Will do so, lays it up and in. And right now, Kiowa County is running Satana out of the building in their own game. Satana's the team that wants to play fast, get out and run. And so far it's been Kiowa County that's done that. Left side now back up top with it. Into the corner. Three ball on the way. Too hard. Offensive rebound. Manriquez back up and in. That's Isaiah. His first bucket of the night. Here comes Kiowa County. Lightning quick. Sawyer Campbell all the way to the rim. He's got four. 14 to two. Halfway through this first quarter. And going to be a turnover there. Manriquez gets called for that one, and Bobby Salazar now into the ballgame. Campbell will come left side. Dieter Ding, this is Brady. Shooting almost 35% from three. Jeremiah Thompson's going to fall for him. He's got six. Brady on the year shooting almost 50% from the floor. Salazar tried to dump it off instead. Manriquez, nice shot fake will come up. Westlow rejected it. They get it back. And then they threw it away into the bench. Campbell will trigger it in. Satana going to put the press on. They'll get it in. Dieterding. Brady with it. We'll get it to Campbell. Right side. He'll cross over. They got through the press. Sawyer walked with it. Right 
outside, now into the middle. Looking to get downhill. Walked with it there, it did Manriquez. Get it in Dieter Ding, now to his brother Brady with it. Well, crossover had it poked free. Almost and over and back, Manriquez. Win it, Chang layup, no good. Tapped out of bounds, gonna stay with Satana, I believe. Top of the key, Salazar, left side. Now they'll go underneath Anthony. Dieter Ding there, turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound pulled down Westlow, and there's going to be a foul called on Munoz. It'll be his first, second team foul on Satana. Two thirty-nine to go. Kiowa County sixteen to two over Satana here. Kiowa County the ten seed. Satana the seven seed. Dieter Ding. He'll get it to Campbell. He'll split the defenders. Three on one. Brady. And it rattled out, but dropped back down for the senior. He's got five. Left him open, Manriquez to answer, no good. Campbell pulled down the board. He'll throw it up ahead, Dieter Ding. Contact, plus the foul. Brady's got seven. As at the second foul, now on Victor Manriquez. Into the ball game, Joseph Anderson, along with Tony Moreno. And then uh, for Kiowa County, it's going to be Silas Hawkins into the ball game, as well as Caden Westlow, looks like. 2.09 to go first quarter, 19-point lead for the Mavericks and something that almost nobody saw coming. Santana's that team that wants to get out and run, and Kiowa County has said, okay, you want to run. And they're trying to run them out of the building. Anderson into the corner. Moreno thought about the three. Manriquez will bring it up. Now Salazar. Still that 2-3 zone from Kiowa County. Manriquez will try to split the defense. Dumped it off underneath. Layup no good. Anthony the board. No. Westlow pulls it down and walked with it. Caden Westlow there, the sophomore. They'll get it in. Howard County, I thought maybe they were going to go to a 3-2, but stay in that 2-3. Little runner, no good. Thompson clears the board. He'll look to bring it up. Cross over to that right side. A lot of contact, no whistle. Dieter Ding pulls down the board. Brady. Oh my goodness. Off the mark, no good. Thompson the board and had it stripped out from underneath by Salazar. Manriquez up ahead. Moreno, no good. Rebound Dieter Ding. Kiowa County trying to run again. Two on one. Brady, little runner from the free throw line, no good. I think he was looking for the contact, didn't get it. Inside and a blocking foul gonna go on Brock Dieterding. We'll see if that's on the floor, I believe it is. As Sawyer Campbell set to check back into the ball game, Manriquez there took it strong to the rim. We'll take a look here. That's probably the right call. Anthony will come out here for Satana. Just two points for them in the first quarter so far, and it came from Manriquez. He's got it now. Into the corner, Moreno thought about the three. 43 seconds to go. Mavericks lead it by 20. 
Little dump off, jumper off the front iron, no good. Moreno high off the glass, no. Westlow the board. Up ahead, Brady Dieterding. We'll go to the corner, Brock. Oh, got his man in the air with a shot fake, dumped it off to Westlow underneath, and he finished it. He's the fifth different Maverick to score in this first quarter. Moreno. 13 seconds to go. Satana can hold for the last shot if they wish. Jumper from Manriquez. No good. Rebound pulled down. Stolen away. Layup is good with two. Dieter Ding. Three-quarter court heave is going to come up short as Anderson's basket will be the last one of the first quarter. And Satana's got to figure something out because they're getting run out of the gym right now. Kiowa County leads it 24-4. to 7-10 matchup, KCMC Sports. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. Second quarter just getting started here, and it was a first quarter that Kiowa County put up 24. Five different guys scored. Satana only two baskets, and one of them came right at the end of the quarter. Dieter Dings in the front court. Hammer time. Two-handed flush from the senior. He's in double figures with 10. And Satana, Coach... Duzine told me ahead of time tonight, or this afternoon, I should say, that they're not going to change anything in what they were doing. As here you see Dieterding out in front of the pack, and the kids got hops. I'll skip it backside. Open for three. Not going to take it, though, was Miramontes. Tries to get the layup to go, and he got the reverse. And Satana going to back out of that press now. Dieter Ding, Thompson right side. He looked to drive inside, lost it off of his shoe out of bounds. Miramontes. We'll skip it backside, open for three. Off the back iron, no good. Offensive rebound though, Miramontes pulls it down, put it back up and in. Thompson in some trouble, will go to the corner, Campbell. Almost walked with it. We'll come up top, Brady Dieterding back to Campbell in the corner. Got his man in the air. From 12, no good. Rebound Miramontes. Game in Manhattan has gone final. K-State comes back from behind to beat Texas Tech, 68-58. Inside, little runner, no good. Rebound pulled down. And they threw it to Dieterding, a two-on-one. Brady will step through, rejected by Miramontes, and then he denied Chang. Dieterding's jumper, no good. Three ball on the way. Yeah. 
26 to 8, your score here. Brady with the shot fake will give it now. Campbell Chang with it. Top of the key. Dieter Ding buried it. That's Brock. Twenty-one point lead for Kiowa County. Satana. Miramontes outside. Tried to hop through. Fadeaway jumper. No good. Westlow pulls down the rebound. We'll get it through Dieter Ding. Two on one. Oh, he went behind the back to Brock and he lost it out of bounds. And that's something you can do when you're up 21 and your head coach can smile about it. Hoffman sitting on the side. Had a big smile on his face with that one. His senior tried to, he's already stuffed one. He's got 10 tonight. And he just tried to have the assist of the day. Westlow gonna walk with it, but they're gonna say a foul call. It's gonna be a push on Satana. Now back into the ball game here. Looks like gonna be Salazar and Anderson for Satana. As Manrique is the one that picks that foul up, it's his third. Enriquez averaging about nine points a game so far this year. And then also into the ball game, gonna be Isaiah Garcia for the first time tonight, four and white for Satana. Brock with it. Gonna make Satana come up and guard out of that zone. Campbell, left side, they'll go into the corner of Dieterding. Gets inside from 12 off the back iron, no good. Rebound cleared by Munoz. Manrique, or excuse me, Salazar with it here. We'll get it into the middle, Anthony outside. Thought about the three, not gonna take it. Let this one fire off the front iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Garcia. Hits it in the middle, dumps it off underneath. Runner, no good. Fight for the board. Dieter Ding clears it. Up ahead, Brock. Lost the handle, will slow it down. He'll kick it outside. He found his brother. Who buried it? Brady Dieter Ding has 13 here tonight. Anthony, turnaround jumper. No good. Campbell pulls the board down. Brock Dieterding will go outside. Brady just hit one. No good. Brady Dieterding shooting almost 40% from three on the year. And almost 50 from the floor. Munoz into the corner now. He'll bring it up top. Garcia will dump it off inside out. Three ball on the way. No good, but the offensive rebound put back Joseph Anderson. And Coach Ta or excuse me, Coach Hoffman going to take a timeout here. 3.07 to go. Kiowa County leads it by 22 in this first game of the day. KCMC Sports back after this. Two to 10, your score here. Kiowa County has had five guys score. Satana's had three score. Brady Dieterding leads the way with 13 this afternoon for the Mavericks as he's averaging almost 30 points a game since Christmas. Come left side, Sawyer Campbell. 
He'll get all the way in, tried to dump it off underneath, and Anthony took it from him. It's a big last three minutes here if you're Satana. It you, feels like you got to close this thing down a little bit. Almost walked with it. Anthony, drop step, Campbell poked it free, but it's foul. So I think that gonna go on Campbell, and it will, it'll be his first. Not a lot of fouls called in this one so far. Four on Satana, three on Kiowa County. And they're gonna say it was on the shot here for Anthony. Anthony, nothing but the bottom of the net on that one. And the leading score for, for Satana, that's his first points of the night. 55% free throw shooter on the year. Coach Duzine said that was one of his main worries coming into the tournament for this Satana squad was they don't shoot it exceptionally well from the free throw line. Thompson, two and a half to go here, first half. Dieter Ding. They're gonna be a blocking foul called, I believe, on Case and Anthony. as it'll be his first. Campbell to trigger it in, will do so. Dieter Ding catching fire in the corner, no good. Rebound Anthony. Satana looking to run. Home run ball just out of the reach. Oh, he saved it, oh my goodness. Garcia was able to save it. Jumper no good though. And then Thompson threw it behind Brock Dieter Ding. Two ten to go, first half. Salazar, now a Manriquez with it. Garcia thought about the three, dumped it off underneath. Campbell stole it out in front of everybody. Sawyer Campbell had it poked free from behind. And Coach Hoffman is not happy with his freshman right now as immediately after that, it almost looked like he was going to go up and maybe try to dunk it. Kind of slowed down, looked behind him, and that gave the ability to be poked free, and Coach Hoffman going to give him an earful as he comes to the bench. And now some confusion here. As the... And I don't know if you guys could hear that or not, but they just gave the foul to a guy that was sitting on the bench for Satana. Coach Duzine not happy. Gonna walk all the way down to the end of the bench. And uh, I don't know if we've got a replay of that at all or not. And now, Coach Duzine there being talked to, obviously not happy. And I think they were then going to change the foul to go on Case and Anthony, and that would not be right either, as he would have been on the other end of the floor. So the officials having a rough go of it here for the last little bit. And I be honest, now official one official left the scores table and now another one gonna go to it. As I'll be honest, I have no idea. What is going, what just happened? As I just backed the live stream up and I think they, if they were gonna get a foul, it would have gone on number four. 
in Isaiah Garcia. But I think they took the foul off of the board. I, I don't know what just happened. I'll be honest. I will see if I can figure that out at halftime. And you'll want to stay with us during halftime because there's a bill going to the uh, Senate at Kansas. We're going to have Grant Newhold on with me here at the start of halftime as Brock Dieterding knocks that one down to tell you a little bit more about it. It's kind of to try to keep the NFHS and that kind of stuff from having exclusive state contracts and what you can do to help. There's a vote on Monday that if you want us to be able to do the stuff like we're doing here and during the league tournament and be able to do it when it matters most for your kids, that Open Space of Sports has a page on Facebook or a post on Facebook that has all the information, done a great job on it, and Grant Newhold at halftime. We'll take a quick break. We'll get him uh, put a headset on, set down in front of us, and he will talk, talk with you through all of that. So make sure at halftime at least right away you don't leave. We'll go to commercial for just a minute, and then we, we will come back and have Grant on with us. 61 seconds to go. Campbell split the defenders. Layup no good. Rebound Miramontes. The Mineola Ingles game, halftime. Ingles leads it 20 to 17 over Mineola. That would be a major upset. Ingles the 11 seed. Runner no good. Dieterding pulls down the board. Thompson's on his left. Going to dump it off underneath. No good. Westlow the board. And a tie up. Possession arrow will give it to Satana. Westlow, two points tonight for the Mavericks. 30 seconds to go. Satana can hold for the last shot if they so wish. Although that's not been the pace of play here today. Munoz blocked by Chang, but a foul. So Chang will pick up his first. And that will put Munoz on the line here for Satana. Just a 10% free throw shooter on the year. Two for 20 from the line is Angel Munoz. Brock Dieterding will check back in here for Chang. And 20.4 on the clock. Kiowa County leads at 34 to 11. They jumped out early on Satana and have never looked back. Can't get it to go. And they're going to say Munoz crossed the free throw line early. Campbell will get it in here. The press back on from Satana. Westlow almost lost it. Home run ball. Brock Dieterding's got it with 10. Shot fake to Thompson. Inside fouled. That was just a straight three-step drop and a Hail Mary ball. Just a go ball down the right sideline. Thompson, two free throws coming for him here. 7.2 on the game clock. Can't get the front end of it to go. Jeremiah just 31% from the line on the air for the Mavericks. Satana going to have a shot at the last shot now. Thompson got the second one. He's got seven. Third highest scorer for the Mavericks. Satana almost threw it away. They did. Dieter Ding with three. With one. Got it off. Off the side of the backboard. No good. Was looking for a foul call. And it's 35 to 11 at the half. Kiowa County running away with this. And again, do not leave, folks. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to have Grant Newhold on with us to talk to you about that bill that's going to the Senate and what you can do to help to make sure that we can be able to bring stuff like this to you when it matters most. Halftime show, I'm Cameron Burney. This is KCMC Sports Halftime coming up right after this. Tech moving into Chase County. Overall, what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can 
be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet internet service and the relationship that we're building with Idea Tech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org employment. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, welcome inside of our quote-unquote broadcast booth here. <laughs> I'm Cameron Bernie. Grant Newhold, our producer-director, sitting to my left. And as you can see on the computer, as he has been all week long, we'll be all at tournament long. And Grant, there's that bill going to the Senate, I believe, that will be a vote on Monday and... Just explain a little bit more about that as you know a lot more about it than I do. Well, I, I don't know a lot about it. I, I started to learn about it last night. Thanks again to Open Spaces Sports, Rich Epp, Cody Epp out there doing an awesome job in western Kansas to allow for more sports coverage across the state. And so they're fighting on behalf of the things that we want too, which is making sure we're allowed to follow our teams all the way through the postseason. As of now, the NFHS network has uh, exclusive rights, and when, once a school has an NFHS contract and they get into the postseason, we are no longer allowed in that facility to do what we love doing. And so the Senate bill is starting to be pushed through that is going to allow for that exclusivity to not exist for the NFHS network, which is you know huge for us because we want to be out here doing this. Yeah, and instead of one camera locked off in the top of the gym and no, maybe no audio, maybe no even score, and you're just kind of watching it. And whereas we can bring in and people like Open Spaces Sports and KCMC Sports, and there's all kinds of them throughout the entire state that can actually cover a basketball game. <laughs> and so if people want to be able to help with that, help us help broadcasters like us, where can they go and how can they help without maybe actually having to go sit through the meeting? <laughs> yeah, so... Again, the Open Spaces Sports is where I learned this from. On Facebook, Open Spaces Sports, Inc., I believe, is their page. You can find it pretty easily if you search them. Um, there's a great post, and we shared it from KCMC Sports and the Kiowa County Media Center Facebook page. There's a great post there that has all that information. Um, they did a really good job of laying out why this is important, uh, when the Senate hearing is, and then also how you can have your voice heard as a patron of high school sports who wants to have entities like us be able to do what we do, your voice can be heard by sending an email, calling the Senate uh, folks on the committee. Again, a link is in that description on how you reach out to those folks. Um, and I would think the more voices saying we want this, we want this, we want this, the more effective it's going to be for it to possibly pass. So, again, Open Space of Sports, Inc. on Facebook. KCMC Sports has shared it and did just go there all of the info will be there because we want to be able to keep doing this we love this this is amazing and what uh, the other factor about this is we have students here doing this production with us yeah. hey guys come here hey everybody come here get into the back of this just show up here we, yeah, we want to show you guys off a little bit we have we have student driven production get in here too uh that bring us all to do these games with and for you as a viewer at home um when the NFHS contract comes into play, these guys get left at home, and you're left with a robot camera that might follow the game. It might not. Whereas we got these guys down on the floor for you covering all that action, up here covering all that action, and they love to do it, and they're getting education from this process, and we take a lot of pride in that education that we give uh, to these students. And so we hope that the NFHS network exclusivity is not a thing anymore, and we can go out and we cover postseason games for you uh, just as we do all the way through the season. Um, but when it matters most, the stakes are the highest, and we want to see our teams all the way through. As of now, we can't do that. Yep, exactly. So couldn't have put it any better myself. It's As you said, it's all on the Facebook page, Open Spaces Sports, KCMC Sports. The Kiowa County Media Center has shared it as well. So just 
go there and all of the all of the info you can get there so we can keep doing what we love to do. Absolutely. So here in halftime, there's about four and a half minutes left on the clock. Kiowa County leads this one 35 211. We better hurry up and get out of here so that way our camera guys can get back to where they need to be. So we All can right, this we'll, let him, we'll let him go to work. <laughs> so for Grant Newhold, I'm Cameron Burney. Four minutes until we are back. Second half action coming up right after this. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. So, you want to produce some basketball, but not just that top camera that covers the game action, but the multiple camera, instant replay, announcer commentary, score and team graphics, and integrated video content type of coverage? I think it's fair to say it's never been easier or required less people than how you can do it now with a computer at center court. Setting up the production hub here makes it possible to bring all your audio and video elements into a central location. It serves as the best seat in the house for announcers next to you and the best possible camera placement to cut in a floor level angle with your game cam for close-ups. Having multiple camera angles is the best way in which to add production value. You can bring the viewer a courtside seat, able to see the numbers on jerseys or emotions on faces. Even getting cameras up as static shots along the baselines helps give variety to moments needed for replay or free throws. Knowing the equipment to get camera feeds to be compatible is important. If you are lucky and have enough people to man the floor cams and the operators know their assignments, there isn't much directing that is needed, and production value really starts to show. Your production may even include sharing your live output to a video board for the in-house audience, making moments even more memorable. Getting some love. Put him on the video board and Hodgman County went nuts. Oh man, they love him. Oh, take a bow, young man. In many ways, the secret to what makes the coverage have that professional touch is what you can't even see. Adding quality audio feeds from multiple sources brings the game to life. Crowd, court, coaches, whistles, shoes, and yeah, even the rims get mic'd. You can pull most of these audio feeds through your on-camera microphones, and they are mixed right inside production truck. A key element to making the coverage become much more than basic game action is the producer's camera. With a zoom rocker and the ability to see your feed on the computer screen, it makes for a really easy option to reach over and get the extra coverage. Whether that's for moments in between the game action or following the play for a prime replay angle, this becomes the way in which you can maximize your production value while not needing to add more people to your crew. You may be wondering how you would ever be able to operate a camera and be the person running the entire show. It's pretty simple with an efficient setup on the table that allows for your right hand to manage switching cameras and capturing replay using the keyboard. The mouse is ready when it's time to give the sponsors what they paid for, which might be how you are even getting to have all this fun in the first place. Easy access to volume control becomes really important when audio from your talent fluctuates as things get exciting. Also, you know that music you hear in professional broadcasts when they're going to commercial? You'll want to do that too. It really is the backtrack and rhythm of the show. This model of production with a producer running camera, audio, replay, and graphics is not possible if you are also responsible for managing a clock or manually keeping score. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Halftime here in Spearville. 35 to 11 at Kiowa County leads it. They jumped out early on top of Satana and they have not looked back since. It was 24 to four at halftime or at the end of the first quarter. Sawyer Campbell, three ball, no good. Rebound pulled down by Thompson, back up and in. He's got nine tonight. 
They'll go into the corner here, now up top. Satana put up four points in the first quarter. Kiowa County tried to beat them with their own game and it worked for a while, or I guess it worked for the entire first half. Dieterding will go backside. Campbell takes it at Wagner and he scored it. 39 to 11, Mavericks are rolling here. Updates from around the league, the other games going on. Ingles leads it at halftime over Mineola. As I believe that one was 20 to 17 at the half. In the other game as Dieterding got a piece of that one inside, no. Thompson, the other game, Ingles is leading at the half and then South Central is running away from Ashland. So Dieter Ding that last bucket as Anthony almost lost it out of bounds will come up top. Jumper on the way, no good. Rebound Sawyer Campbell. Brady Dieter Ding's got 15 tonight. Averaging almost 30 a game since Christmas. Jeremiah Thompson, no good. Dieter Ding drew the defense in there, took a step up. Everybody thought he was gonna shoot it and then dumped it off to Thompson. Kiowa County leads it by 30. Wow, I, I did not see this coming in at all. Miramontes got a three. The press that, Kio, or that Satana has run has caused Kiowa County almost no problems tonight. In fact, Kiowa County was beating it so bad that they pulled the press off in the second quarter, did Satana. Campbell. 5.40 to go, third quarter. Dieter Ding to Thompson in the corner. He'll look to go baseline, but he walked with it. Westlow into the ball game along with Anderson for Satana as Sean Wagner will come out there. So again, updates from around the league. South Central's boys running away from Ashland, which was to be expected. And then in the other one, which would maybe be the upset of the tournament so far if Ingles is able to hold on and beat Mineola. Ingles is the 11th seed. Inside, runner, no good. Dieter Ding the board. He'll throw it out in front of everybody. Jeremiah Thompson stripped from behind. And are they going to say there was a foul there? They are. Wow. Salazar going to pick that one up. As I'll be honest, I thought coming in from behind, Salazar got it clean. Thompson, front iron, but it falls. He's got 10 tonight. Five twelve to go, third quarter. Thompson, just a 31% free throw shooter on the year. Second one, no good, up, left it short. Satana looking to run, Manriquez. Oh, thought he was gonna kick it outside to Salazar, he'll give it to him now. Open for three, off the front iron and then the top of the backboard, but it never went over, so it's still a live ball. Victor Manriquez back into the ball game. As Salazar came out, you saw him there. Miramontes will get it in. They'll go underneath. Anthony took it at Dieterding, shot no good. Westlow pulled it down for a second and might have got away with the travel. Anthony up ahead. Miramontes layup is good. Dieterding now to Westlow. That one deflected. Westlow got it though, gets it to Dieter Ding. Now with the numbers, Thompson. Fadeaway jumper, no good. Anthony stood his ground. Westlow saved it, but he saved it right to Case and Anthony. Satana looking to run. Thompson gonna pick up a foul. So that'll be Jeremiah's first, I believe. And Ji Sung Chang set to check back into the ball game. Going to be a 30-second timeout here, 4.24 to go. 
in the third quarter in Kiowa County, and this one has uh, pulled away early, and uh, they continue to just uh, kind of slowly add to that lead. Coach Hoffman in there has told me that they're maybe the best. They were a one in seven team, but had lost, I believe it was about four games by one possession or less. They've lost two at the buzzer. And then uh, Sickness, they did not have a uh, single game at healthy after about December 10th until the uh, start of the new year. They started one and seven, they've won their last two. If they win today, the winner of this game gets Hodgman County, the defending league champs on Tuesday in Dodge City. And the question on that will be, is Owen Reese healthy or not for Hodgman County? Coach Flores has told me that battling a lot of injuries right now are the Longhorns. But Owen Reese, even at 50%, may be better than 90% of the league at 100. Manriquez will skip it backside. Jumper blocked by Westlow, but a foul. So Manriquez will go to the line for two here as Westlow is going to pick up his first. Two free throws coming, Isaiah Manriquez. That one off the mark. Manriquez, 66% free throw shooter. He's actually the best free throw shooter for the Indians on their roster outside of Bobby Salazar, who's two for two. Manriquez, 66%, averages about nine points a night. Just two for him here this afternoon. Can't get that one to go. Offensive rebound put back up and in, though. Anthony's got his first bucket of the night. Brock Dieterding had it poked free. He got it back. He'll find Campbell outside Chang. Dieterding will slow it down. Now Brock, this left side, Thompson. Going to be a foul before the shot as that one going to go on Miramontes. It'll be his second, I believe. 3.26 to go, third quarter. Dieter Ding to trigger it in, will do so to Chang. Back to Dieter Ding. Brady will go right side Brock, but it got poked free out of bounds. It will stay with Kiowa County here. Dieter Ding to trigger it in. We'll do so Campbell. Up top now Thompson, Brock, Dieter Ding with it. Satana in. Almost a matchup zone here that they're trapping in the corners out of. Chang, Campbell with it now in the corner. They'll run the trap at him. Dangerous pass, Chang gets it over. Thought Dieter Ding was going to take it. Kiowa County just being patient, working it around the perimeter here. They put Brady Dieter Ding at the high post. Satana just dropping the top guy out of that 3-2. Rock got his man in the air, inside. Runner, no good, left it short. Was looking for the foul call, didn't get it. So Tan on a little bit of a run here, trying to put something together. They trail by 21. Miramontes thought about the three. Inside, runner goes for Salazar. Thompson in some trouble. Stolen away by Manriquez, out of bounds though, and it will go to Kiowa County here still. Coach Hoffman not happy. As back into the ballgame, Case and Anthony. Anderson will come out, and then also coming back in is going to be Isaiah Manriquez. 
Hayden Miramontes, leading scorer tonight for Satana, will take a seat there. He's got nine so far this afternoon. Dieterding will get it into Thompson. That one deflected, stolen away. Satana forces another turnover. They've gotten points off of him the last three trips down. Trying to claw and fight their way back into this one. Open three, Manriquez has got it. And that gonna lead to a Coach Hoffman timeout. It's a full timeout. Satana's cut it to 16 and momentum is flipped here. All of a sudden the press giving the Mavericks problems, something it hasn't done all night. And Satana is starting to knock down some three balls. As Kiowa County leads at 42 to 26, as there you see the bracket, the winner of this game will get Hodgman County Tuesday at 6.30. The other games going on right now actually just got an update in the Mineola Ingles game. You see it there on the bottom of the screen, bottom left corner. Mineola, the sixth seed with one of the best players in the entire league in Lang. Tied at 31 at halftime with Ingles. Ingles led it by three at the break. It's currently tied at 31. And then in the other game, Ashland and South Central, the 5-12 matchup. The last update we had was 14 minutes ago. South Central led by 21 at halftime, 37 to 16. So those games going on. Spearville Buckland will come up following the conclusion of this game. So 42 to 26, your score here, and Satana's press has started to cause Kiowa County some problems. And Coach Hoffman had to take a timeout for the Mavericks, and that's gonna be a foul right there called on Munoz. It'll be his second. So now Satana back in this thing, it feels like it, a 16-point game. As excuse me, that's the third on Munoz. Chang will trigger it in, will do so. Campbell, they got poked free. Thompson, though. Able to come away with it, he'll get trapped in the corner, they get it off to Chang. Satana almost forced another turnover. Dieterding, outside, Chang, three ball, no good, but he's gonna go to the line. And I'll be honest, I thought Jisung might have walked with it there before that, and it's gonna be three free throws coming for Chang. Fourth foul on Satana, and that's the fourth foul on Angel, Angel Munoz. Scoreless here tonight for him so far. Minute 28 to go, third quarter. Chang at the line here for the Mavericks. And we're gonna rattle out. 60% free throw shooter on the year is Chang. Averages just 1.5 points a night. He's got his first point in this one. And he's the sixth Maverick to score. Chang, no good off the front iron. Brock Dieterding pulled down the board. We'll get it off now, Brady. Left side, Campbell with it. Minute 20 to go, third quarter. That one stolen away, Salazar took it. He's gonna take it at Brock Dieterding. Layup no good, the follow is good though from Bobby Salazar, or excuse me, from Isaiah Manriquez. Campbell threw it away underneath almost. As Silas Hawkins and Caden Westlow are gonna come into the ball game here. Chang will come out along, or excuse me, Campbell and Thompson will come out here. 64 seconds to go. Hawkins to trigger it in here for the Mavericks. Satana's starting to turn the pressure up. And they're gonna get it in Brady. Back to Hawkins. Threw it right into the arms of Salazar. Gets it off Dieterding, now Kiowa County with numbers. Up ahead, Brock Dieterding. We'll kick it back out, Brady back to Brock. Little runner, got it. Pace is picking up here in this one, and I'm not sure that was even possible. Manriquez will get it back in the corner, gonna let a three fly off the back iron, no good. Rebound Salazar. 
Yeah, oh, it rolled out for him. And then a foul going to go on Manriquez. That'll be the fifth team foul on Satana. Twenty-eight point three on the clock here in the third quarter. They'll get it in Chang. Jisung will get it into the middle, Brock. Now Westlow with it, 22 seconds to go. Mavericks can hold for the last shot if they want. Brock will wrap around. Brady able to come away with it. They'll get it to Chang with 12. He'll get it off, the senior. He's got 15 tonight, does Brady. They run the double team at him. Hit the deck out of bounds. Gonna go to Satana. There's a lot of contact there, no whistle. Dieter Ding not happy with it. And now Satana will have 4.5 seconds to see what they can come away with. They'll get it into Manriquez in the backcourt with three, with two, with one. They threw it out of bounds. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Mavericks lead at 45 to 28 over the Indians. The pressure gives them a little bit of problems. Does Kiowa County, but they still lead it by 17 at the end of three. Fourth quarter coming up after this on KCMC Sports. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. End of the third quarter here in Spearville. 45-28, Kiowa County with the lead, but Satana won that third quarter. 18, or excuse me, 17 to 10. So they cut the lead down a little bit. That one deflected, open for three off the back iron, no good. Dieter Ding tapped it, but he tapped it right to Anthony. No good, rebound Campbell and he's tied up. Get it in, Dieter Ding in the middle, now left side Thompson. He'll dribble through, and now come up top. Brock Dieter Ding will dribble into a three, buried it. He's got 14. The Dieter Ding brothers have combined for 29 tonight. Into the middle, Anthony, somewhere between a shot and a pass, but it works out as Anderson there, able to put it in. Chang. It's going to be fouled. That's who you see, Dieterding just dribbles into it. Had some shooting struggles, but able to knock that one down. At the fourth foul on Victor Manriquez, sixth on Satana, so Mavericks in the bonus the rest of the way. They'll get it in, Campbell. Ball's on the floor, no whistle, shot, no good, tap. Dieterding pulls it down. Brady will come up top, Campbell. Thompson with it, Dieterding, this is Brock. That one no good. They'll go up ahead quickly, Kiowa County didn't get back. Miramontes up and under, no good. Rebound, second attempt is gonna go down for Anderson. And uh, I believe Satana gonna take a timeout here. They've cut it back down to 16 again. 
30-second timeout. So you see the up and under, but just right place, right time for Anderson. And Satana has turned up the pressure majorly, and the whistles have quit blowing here quite as often as they were. But that's what is that's what Satana is known for, that just hard, in-your-nose defense. Head coach Tim Duzin there in the middle of them. And uh, they will just play hard, in-your-nose, in-your-face, hard-nose defense and uh, make you make mistakes. And Coach Hoffman telling his guys now, I would imagine that that's what's getting ready to happen. And uh, the officials, when you're playing Satana, it's always been that way, that you can't, they can't call everything. And so that tough defense, just on the edge of fouling, just constant, constant pressure. Starting to see that here as Campbell. We'll get inside, dumped it off. Dieter Ding high off the backboard, no good. That one just deflected. Iowa County, I thought for a second, was going to put some pressure on themselves. 16-point game. Satana's kept it to where they feel like they're still in it. Inside out, jumpers, good again from Anderson. And Satana going to take another timeout here. This one a full timeout. They've cut it to 14. They're trying to scratch and claw their way back into this one with a little bit of defense, and then Joseph Anderson's in double figures. Fourteen-point ball game. Satana's turning defense into offense, and uh, Kiowa County has struggled with it. We'll see what Coach Hoffman draws up out of the timeout, but got to imagine Satana going to change what they're doing. Went for the steal, didn't get it. They'll get it back to Chang. Now to Campbell, into the middle. Brady Dieterding will dump it off. Westlow. He's got his second bucket of the night. He's got four. Isaiah Manriquez, now Salazar with it. Back to Manriquez. Anthony will go outside. Miramontes is open for three, no good. Rebound, Campbell pulls it down. Under six minutes to go here, fourth quarter, 50 to 34. Into the corner, Chang. Dieter Ding with it, back to Chang. Underneath, Westlow. Outside Chang. We're up top now, Kiowa County is starting to slow down a little bit more against that pressure. Dieter Ding with it. Campbell going to be fouled hard by Manriquez, that Isaiah. And Campbell now going to shoot one and one. Victor Manriquez back into the ball game. That's the second foul on Isaiah. Sawyer Campbell on the line. Six points this afternoon for him. Can't get it to fall. And for the final 5-14, I got to imagine the Mavericks going to have to knock down some free throws because Satana's probably not going to quit being really aggressive and it leading to fouls. And then Satana's going to have to knock down shots like that where they're open. They want to be able to get back in. This one threw it away. Anthony going to take it himself. And uh, blocking foul going to go on Campbell, and Anthony's going to go to the line for two. So Campbell, that's going to be his second. They're going to actually say it was before the shot.
They'll get it in. Anthony, they snuck him behind Campbell, and now he's going to go to the line for two. And I think that's going to go on Thompson. It would be his second, and it is. So now Case and Anthony to the line. Two free throws for him. He's one for two from there tonight. 55% free throw shooter on the year, averaging almost 13 points a night. Can't get that one to fall. Yeah, we're going to rattle out. No good. Brady Dieter dang the board. And then he threw it away. Was looking for Brock. And Dieter Ding there talking with one of the officials. Four forty five to go, sixteen point lead for Kiowa County. Into the corner up top, they'll work at left side. Manriquez, rise and fire, no good. Offensive rebound though, no. Third chance, got it. Again, Joseph Anderson, he's got 12 tonight. Mavericks going to break the press. Dieter Ding will dribble back out. We'll dump it off now, Sawyer Campbell. Back to Dieter Ding, over to Brock. And that's going to be a foul, going to go on Isaiah Manriquez. There you see Anderson fighting for it underneath, able to get it up and in on about the third attempt. Dieter Ding on the line, that's the third foul on Isaiah Manriquez. Brady Dieter Ding, 76% from the line on the year. Got the first one. He's averaging 24 points a night. He's got 16 here today. I guess 17. Miramontes will go inside. Dangerous pass on the floor. And it's going to be a foul call, I believe, on Thompson. And it will go on Thompson. It'll be his third. Halfway through this fourth quarter here, Mavericks lead it by 16. Game following this one, uh, the 8-9 matchup, Spearville and Buckland. Into the corner, now up top, Miramontes. We'll try to hop through, he got inside it and was able to finish it. He's got 11. Satana's been able to cut it to about 14 a couple of times. Haven't been able to get it any closer than that, and Thompson just dribbled out of bounds. Tony Moreno into the ballgame now, and the leading scorer for the Indians will come out. As there you saw Thompson out of bounds. Miramontes got the bucket and then forced the turnover. 14 point. Game and holy cow, we had a big change in Mineola. We told you it was tied going to the third quarter. Moreno's three, no good. Mineola puts up 33 in the fourth quarter. They win it. They, they had scored 31 through three quarters. They put up 33 in the fourth quarter to beat Ingles 64 to 47. Wow. Westlow will go to the line here. One and one, the final one and one for the Mavericks. Gonna rattle that one home at Will Caden. Got them both. Miramontes left side now. Thought about the three. He'll get it back. Manriquez off the mark. No good. 
Thompson the board, ball's on the floor. Gonna lead to a Miramontes three and he's fouled by Thompson. That'll be three free throws coming for Aiden. Got the first. Okay, now we have conflicting scores. I was told 67-47 Mineola, and now I'm hearing 54-47 Mineola. Either way, sounding like Mineola advances. We'll wait to see on the official final score for that, but Mineola will advance. Three oh three to go here in this one. Fifty four forty Kiowa County with the lead. First one good from Campbell. He's got seven tonight. Chang back into the ball game for Thompson. Second one good as well. Inside, runner, no good off the window. Dieter ding the board. As it was 54-47 was the final in Mineola, 54-47. So my apologies, not 33 scored, but still 23 points put up after you only put up 31 and three quarters. Pretty impressive from Lang and the Wildcats. So they advance to play at 4.45 Tuesday in Dodge City, and they will take on Pawnee Heights and Eli Lang and Alec Carlson. Can we clear everybody off of the floor and let those two dudes go one-on-one -on -one for the entire night? Because that, that is basically what will happen. 56-40 is your score here. Satana gonna have to pull something out of their bag of tricks. Kiowa County has kind of figured out that press in the fourth quarter of this one after it gave them a little bit of problems there in that third quarter. So out of the timeout, Thompson will trigger it in. Will do so, Campbell. In some trouble, finds Dieterding. 16 point lead for the Mavericks. Brock had it poked free out of bounds and will stay with the Mavericks. Three guys in double figures for the Mavericks. We got five guys have scored double figures here tonight. Brady Dieterding, 17. Brock Dieterding, 14. Jeremiah Thompson, 10. And then for Satana, Miramontes with 13 and Joseph Anderson with 12. Campbell, no good. So Satana here, they play fast, but I just don't know if there's enough time if they can knock down enough shots and then that one gonna get turned over. The game following this one, Spearville and Buckland, the 8-9 matchup. Spearville, the eight seed, Buckland, the nine seed. They have not played yet this year. Spearville much improved from last year. Buckland, probably gone that much the other way from where they were last year. Thompson into the corner, Westlow. We'll kick it to the corner, Brock Dieterding up top. Brady open for three, he's fouled and he hit it. Four point play opportunity upcoming, Dieterding's got 20.
as you see here, inside out. Never saw the other defender coming, and then Manriquez picks up his fifth foul. Caught Dieterding on the arm. Brady there, the senior averaging at 24 a night, has not had a full basketball season his entire high school career. And the senior having himself one heck of a season. He's got 21 here tonight. And the Mavericks lead it by 20. That one going to be dribbled off of Manriquez's knee. They'll get it across here, Salazar. He'll hand it off. Manriquez, under two minutes to go. Thought about the three. Not going to take it. They're going to skip it backside. Miramontes. Salazar going to get inside. A lot of contact. No good. And it's going to be two shots coming. Is that one going to go on Chang? It'll be his second. That one's going to be off the front iron. No good. Salazar, two points tonight for Bobby. Second one, got it to go. Dieter Ding, minute 37 to go, 19 point lead. Campbell lost it out of bounds, but they're gonna say Satana touched it last. So uh, the loser of this game will play Tuesday at 11.30 against the loser of our next game. The winner of this one gets Hodgman County. The winner of our next one gets Meade. Dieter Ding will step through, through it outside. Campbell over to Westlow now. Up top, Brady. Mavericks just looking to kill the clock here. Campbell dumped it underneath Westlow. We'll throw it back outside now. Dieter Ding, 70 seconds to go. Mavericks looking to just run this thing out and move on to play the state or the league runner-ups last year in Hodgman County. Manriquez, no good. Salazar the board, no. Brady Dieter Ding will clear it. We're under a minute to go. We'll give it off now. Brock up ahead. Campbell poked out of bounds. We'll stay with Kiowa County. Forty-five seconds to go, 19-point ball game. They'll get it in. Dieter Ding looking to just hold it. We'll give it to Brock. And now Satana going to come out and play defense and going to be a foul. And Salazar going to pick that one up. Coach Duzine for Satana, not happy with that. He said come out and pressure and just make Kiowa County throw it around and Instead, Salazar comes out and fouls down 19 with 37 seconds to go. That one going to get knocked down for Brock. He's got 15 tonight. Brock averaging at nine points a night, shooting 73% from the free throw line. Got them both. Three ball on the way, no good. Anthony comes down with it, puts it up and in. He's got five tonight. And now with 27 seconds to go in a 19 point ball game, Satana gonna take a timeout. 62-43, Kiowa County with the lead, full timeout. KCMC Sports back after this.
27 seconds to go. Satana took that time out there. And they will put a press on here. They do have a safety valve sitting back in case an Anthony. Jeremiah Thompson to trigger it in for the Mavericks, up 19. They'll get it in, Campbell. Now to Thompson. He'll split through the defenders. And he lost it out of bounds. Thompson tonight, 10 points for Kiowa County. Sean Wagner will come out here for Satana, 18 seconds to go here. Miramontes. Victor with it underneath. Turnaround jumper, in and out, no good. Anthony, the board, will end up in the arms of Dieter Ding. And he's just going to hold on to it. I don't think they even have to cross midcourt. Westlow will do so anyway. And that's going to be your final, 62 to 43. After Kiowa County jumped out, they were up 20 plus in the first quarter, and they've just never looked back at press from Satana. Gave them a little bit of problems in that third quarter. But Brady Dieterding leads at Kiowa County with 21 points. They have three guys in double figures: Dieterding with 21, Brock Dieterding with 16, Thompson 10. Campbell added eight, Westlow threw in six, Chang hit one free throw. And then on the other side for Satana, they will move on to play the loser of Spearville and Buckling coming up next. They were led by Miramontes, put up 13. Anderson had 12, most of that in the second half. As you see the two head coaches there, Tim Duzine and Matt Hoffman, two very well respected coaches throughout the league as a Almost all of them are all week long. Kiowa County will move on. The first upset we've had of the tournament. The 10th seed moves on to play the runner up from league last year in Hodgman County. And the question there, we will find it out on Tuesday, is how close to 100% is Owen Reese? Because he can change a ball game in the blink of an eye. Put up 28 in a semifinal win last year and can do that night in and night out. Kiowa County wins this one. Going away, 62-43 to 43 is your final here. And the next game upcoming, Buckland and Spiraville will be the 8-9 matchup that will go one of two ways, I figure. Buckland shoots a million threes, and uh, they want to get out and just play as fast as possible. Well, Spiraville's probably going to run with them. The question is, who's going to be able to knock down more outside jumpers? 15 minutes on the clock. Buckland and Spearville coming up after this. I'm Cameron Burney. This is KCMC Sports. Second game and our final game of the day after this. day of the 2022 Show Me Ball here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. We start with Class 3 on a sunny but chilly day at Faroe Field. It'll be Reed Spring Wolves taking on the Cardinal Ritter Lions. The Lions led by You're just Martin. doing that same little out route for me if you would. I'm ready. So I just want them into the camera with their palms yep. uh, for about five seconds. Hey everybody, Grant Newhold here, KCNC Sports out here in Columbia, Championships at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. I have a rep from Huddle out here visiting right now, trying to learn all the things it takes to do some higher level production with Production Truck, formerly made by Blue Frame, now is part of Huddle. And so since Tyler was out here and I was showing him the ropes a little bit, it made me think I should take a moment to try to share with you some of the things I was showing him about how to make a top of broadcast, a pregame, an intro. And this is something that I've been able to put together all on my phone and then mix into the broadcast as a really professional way to start the show.
I like to get an opening shot right away so that the fans can be seen coming in and it kind of establishes the facility and where we're at. So usually that's outside the facility pushing in. And then I'll come in and I will try to showcase the fans as they're filling in to the arena. And that's a good transition from fans to the field or the court or whatever you might be producing. And that allows me to get down onto the field and start isolating head coaches. Are you head coach? Can I get a shot of you for the open of the broadcast? I just need you standing looking out at the field. I'm just going to do about five seconds around you just so we can identify you in the open of the show. And you can look right past the camera. You don't have to look at me at all, okay? Let let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let me get my set and exposure here. There we go. That's all I need. Thanks, Coach. I like to pull out each head coach so we get a moment to see them because our cameras aren't always being able to reach out and get a very good close-up. So this is kind of that moment where we're able to isolate people to look for. So that might be a head coach um, and then also a key player. So I'll ask my announcers before I head to the field. I'll say, who am I looking for? Because these are the guys that we're going to talk about the most. Okay, so one or three on the white and then seven, seven on red. red for sure. Yeah. Okay. I gotta, I gotta get seven. So they'll pick out a key player for me on each team and then I'll go down and I'll pull them out and I'll isolate that player as well. Hey, seven. Seven. Will you just stand there and let him throw to you? Hang on, I'll tell you when I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Almost didn't get seven. <laughs> I was about to test my speed of running down the tunnel with those guys. Can I get a group shot of your girl? And then I like together? to try to involve the fans as much as possible in this moment. So the cheerleaders, I gather them up and I get their coach to organize them in front of their cheering section. And then I do a quick push at them right. and I tell them get really loud. Five, this is going to be exciting because they'll cheer and they'll look more excited if they try to get really loud. And then I'll shoot myself what's called like an end cap so that it's something that's still more general if it's specific to this event. Like sometimes on the big board, they'll be showing the day's matchup. It's kind of cool to be able to show that if it's happening or just a shot of the Misha flag or something that's going to maybe be that ending logo sign before we transition from that into a live camera. And I usually leave that very long on the back end so I can just dissolve to my live camera as that video is still playing through in production truck. So then what's cool is I can edit all of that together on my phone, typically even as I'm headed back to my location where I'm producing from. And so I'll be editing that on the fly, um, just making the shots be in sequence if they hadn't been shot in sequence, trimming the ends just a little bit here and there if I've shot something a little too long, but I usually just shoot for what I need. And so I don't have a lot of editing to do. So I'll do a little trim. I of course want cross dissolves in between those because it looks really nice whenever things dissolve between it. Um, and then so I'll just throw that together really quick. And then I'll, it's really seamless to be able to get content from your phone edited and onto the computer in that way using and launch it right into the broadcast. So you can time that up with whoever's commenting for you and then be able to cue that into a really nice solid open instead of just all of a sudden here we have a live camera that brings the viewer in, it kind of sets the stage. It's kind of more fun and more professional overall. And so I just really feel like this is a way that we can really bring a lot of production value. So I look forward to seeing some of you guys out there trying this now. Let me know if you need help. This is Grant from KCMC Sports. You can find me at kcmcsports.com. We'll talk to you later. It's the final day of the 2022 Show Me Ball here at Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri. We start with class three on a sunny but chilly day at Faro Field. It'll be Reed Spring Wolves taking on the Cardinal Ritter Lions. The Lions led by Marvin Burks, one of their top wide receivers. Spring going to try to pull the upset. It'll be Andy McFarland's club looking to their all-everything left-handed quarterback. Blandy Burrell is ready to lead the Wolves on this chilly day for football. Hello again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Cam Thomas, my name is Bo Bayman. Glad to have you here for the Class 3 Championship game. Cardinal Ritter, 13-0. Reed Springs, 11-2 in camp. I think this should be a pretty good ball game.
We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodd. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It's the final game of the day here. The others have all gone final. We know the entire bracket except for what you're going to watch in front of you here today. Spearville and Buckland, the 8-9 matchup. Spearville's the 8-5-5 five and five on the year. They're 2-1 and one in their last three. These two teams have not played yet this year. Spearville started the year 4-2 and two and since then have fallen off a little bit. They get Buckland here today, and Buckland, the defending league champs. However, they lose most of their scoring. They're on in the middle of a two-game losing streak to South Gray and South Central. South Gray ran them out of their own gym, and then uh, South Central beat them by eight. It's a game today that Buckland, if they're able to knock down the three ball, that's how they're going to win it. Spearville, it's going to be their guards. Buckle up, folks, and bring your track shoes because you're going to be running all day long back and forth. Buckland going to start the day with it, forcing a turnover. That Andrew Bowman in the corner. They will shoot the three ball like it's their religion because it basically is. Dumps it underneath. Garen Stempert, no good. He's the leading scorer on the year for this Buckland squad, averaging 14 points a night. Their big man in the middle, Jaron Lindsay, would be their second leading scorer, averaging 13. And then Andrew Bowman averaging 12. So they got three guys averaging at least 12, and Stemper going to start it off with an and one. So Stempert on the line, one free throw coming for him here. <laughs> on the way, no good. Rebound out of bounds. Going to stay with Buckland. Cleason couldn't quite bring that one in. Deers team, they can catch fire in an instant. Maybe not quite as good as shooters but maybe more of them top to bottom. Jumper on the way, no good. Cleason fighting for the board and it's gonna go out of bounds. He's gonna stay with the Lancers. Ruiz, Kressler, Alcala, Huff, and Cleason. You're starting five for the Lancers. And it will be Alcala to trigger it in. We'll do so into the corner, up top. They're gonna run him all the way around. They got him a look, just offline. And then saved out of bounds right there off of Colson Cook. Jarrett Cleason able to go after that one. Cleason, the 6'2 senior, will trigger it in. Will dump it underneath. They'll kick it back out. Thought about the three. Instead, they'll go over Ruiz. No good. Rebound pulled down underneath, shot up, rejected. Lindsey got a hand on it. And then a foul going to be called on Lindsey there. 
as Huff was headed to the basket. They'll get it into the corner, looking for Ruiz up top. Instead, Huff will drive inside. Bowman's took it from him. He'll look to bring it up, going to come all the way inside, kicked it out, Stemper. Andrew Bowman walked with it. Ruiz, oh my goodness, and then the shot fake from Cleason. Wow, Ruiz up and under and lays it in, or lays it off, I should say, to Cleason. Outside, Lucas Kirk buries a three. Tell you what, both crowds brought a pretty good crowd. You'd expect Spearville to being in their home gym, but Buckland brought a pretty good crowd themselves. Huff trapped in the corner. Turns, threw it into no man's land, but Ruiz tracked it down. That one stolen away. Stemper up ahead to Kirk. And uh, going to be a foul call here. And Coach Eli Applegate not happy as... He thought the official that was made, that made the call uh, was not the official that should have been the one that made it. As Kirk knocked down the first one. And now some confusion again with the officials. They'll go to the scores table. And we had this problem in the last game, the same crew. They called a foul on somebody that was actually on the bench during the game at one point. And now they go over to the side and make sure that they got it right and it's on Ruiz. It's his first. Second one. Got that one, did Kirk. He's got four tonight. Or excuse me, five. We'll go inside. Runner. No good. Lindsay the board. Saved it underneath to Bowman. Aces by eight early. We'll get it off Kirk. We'll skip it backside. Colson Cook's already hit one three. Andrew Bowman's going to go all the way inside and finish it. Ruiz kicked it out. Huff open for three. Got it. Back and forth we go. It could be one of these ball games, folks. Buckland wants to play to 80. The difference in this year's Buckland team and last year's Buckland team is Buckland's team last year could win defensive battles that were 45 to 40. This year's team, I'm not sure that they can do that. And that may be why they're the nine seed this year instead of the five where they were last year. Kirk, left that one a little bit short. Caden Tilly's in the ballgame for Buckland now. It's double zero in red, and then now into the ballgame for Spearville. Going to be Josiah Metling, the 6'2 senior. That free throw good from Kirk. He's got six. Stempered into the ballgame for Kirk. Six quick points there for the sophomore. Averages 10 a night. One of four Buckland guys that averages at least 10 a night. Huff hit one from that exact spot just a second ago. Outside, Ruiz catching fire. Off the front iron, no good. Offensive board, though. Inside out. Ruiz will try again, no good. Bowman the board. Buckland looking to run. Up ahead, Stemper. Layup, no good. Andrew Bowman almost pulled down the board. Out of bounds will go to the Lancers. Karen Stemper, you see there, laid out after it. Blake Werner will check into the ballgame here for 
Spearville now as Huff will come out. Ruiz. Inside, all the way in, left-hander no, jumper no good, out of bounds gonna stay with Spearville. There you see Danny Alcala in the ball game for the first time. Ruiz up top with it, we're over halfway through this first quarter, Buckland leads it by eight. This is the final game that we need to have happen to determine the entire guys bracket. And a travel call going to go there against Werner. <laughs> Werner will check back out of the ball game as Huff got a breather and back out there now for the Lancers. Knocked down that three early. And it has been lightning quick speed here so far from both of these teams tonight. They're going to go inside Lindsay. Had it poked free, kicked back out. Stempert, they're going to say it was deflected. Bowman, the crossover, took it inside. No good. Lindsay taps it back up and in. He's the fifth red ace to score tonight. All of the starters have now scored for Buckland. Into the corner. Three ball on the way. Off the front iron, no good. Alcala couldn't quite knock it down, just left it a little bit short. Andrew Bowman inside out. Cook will kick it outside. Tilly had to go way up top to get it. Lindsay. Big man going to go to work inside out. Colson. Cook off the mark. Bowman the board. We'll kick it up top. Stempert thought about the three. Not going to take it. Instead, we'll get in. Tried to dump it to Lindsay, I think. And then uh, miscommunication. A lot of contact underneath. No whistle. Spearville looking to run. Poked free from behind, ends up into the arms of Metling, though. He'll kick it outside, and Spearville will reset here. They'll go inside Metling. He'll work on the big man. Got him in the air with a shot fake, and he finished it. Spearville's crowd trying to get some noise into this building. A little bit of life for them. Stamper. No good, Lindsay the board outside. Andrew Bowman on the reload will silence the crowd. 18 to seven. It's a red ace team that's averaging 65 points a night. Inside out, thought about the three there, did Kressler. will get thrown out of bounds. Kirk back into the ball game for Cook. And Huff will come in as well. There you see Lindsay on the reload found Bowman who buried it. Bowman tried to dump it underneath Lindsay. He got it to him, couldn't get it to fall. Fight for the rebound, he'll kick it out. Stempert up top, Andrew Bowman. Kirk with it here, top of the key. Tilly will flip it off, Andrew Bowman. Now to Stempert, going to look to go all the way inside. Can't get it to fall. Metling the board, he looking to run for the Lancers. He'll slow down, lost the handle for a second. Andrew Bowman stole it. We're under a minute to go here, first quarter. Bowman, now to Kirk, looking to get downhill. Got his man in the air, Stempert. Oh, what a find to Lindsay. Buckling up 13 here. They put up 20 in the first quarter. Ruiz lost it and going through, had it poked free, and then just never could get it back. Caleb Cox into the ball game here. As you see, Stempert, just the wraparound. I mean, that's just pretty. Thirty-eight seconds going at the pace of this one. Both teams can still have it two more times. Kirk, no good, and an offensive foul called on him. 
He looked over to the bench at head coach Derek Bevan, who was just standing there kind of shaking his head. Yeah, that was probably one, and that it was. Cox got set up. At the second foul called on the Aces. Only five fouls called so far in this first quarter. Ruiz will find an open man in the corner. That was Alcala. Huff. Nice move up and under. Shot no good, though. Rebound Bowman with 12. We'll find Kirk in the corner. Catch and fire. No good. Rebound tapped around till he's got it. Garen Stempert with four. No good. Rebound pulled down by Kressler. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Buckland hangs 20 on Spearville. They lead it by 13. All five starters have scored for Buckland. Second quarter coming up after this. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, into the first quarter here in Spearville. And it's the nine seed Buckland up by 13. They've hung 20 on the Lancers in the first quarter, and they have all five starters have scored. Kirk will kick it outside Stempert. Oh, he went behind the back, dumped it underneath. And he finds Kirk. Three ball off the mark, no good. Rebound pulled down by Alcala, or excuse me, by Ruiz, and he's going to run it up himself. Went all the way in, kicked it out, open three ball, no good. Rebound, Kressler. Back out. Huff's got one three, can't get that one to fall. And I really hope you brought your track shoes today, folks, because that first quarter, it's a sprint, but it's going to be a sprint for four quarters. Three ball off the mark, no good. Tilly pulled down the board, and the possession arrow is going to give it to Spearville. We told you it was going to be a sprint. Well, neither team has taken a timeout in that first quarter. And there wasn't exactly a lot of dead balls. That one, dangerous pass, but it gets through. Cleason, no good. Rebound, Bowman, looking to run. Seven minutes to go. Second quarter, Cook up top, Stemper. Kirk calling for it in the corner. Instead, he dumped it underneath. Tilly can't get it to finish or can't get it to go down. And that foul going to go on the Lancers, and Caden Tilly going to go to the line for two shots. First one's going to go down for him. Tilly, just a 31% free throw shooter on the year for the Aces. But he knocked down that first one. Ian Melendez into the ballgame now for the Lancers. Second free throw, good as well. 6.54 to go, second quarter. Melendez. 
Left side, Huff with it. He's knocked down one three in that first quarter. They dump it underneath, inside out, open for three. Cleason, no good, offensive board, no. Fight for it underneath, coming downhill, got everybody in the air, and it's going to go down for Jarrett Cleason. Backside pass, Stemper thought about the three, going to get inside. He's passed it, exceptional today, and Andrew Bowman unable to finish it. And Caden Tilly's going to go back to the line for two more. As uh, here you see inside got it. both Bowman and I believe that was Tilly in the air, and he was able to knock it down. Tilly's first one going to rattle out, and uh, checking into the ball game here. Jaron Lindsay coming in. Andrew Bowman will come out. Five points for him there tonight. As Tilly will get set for the second one. Went two for two from the line last time. This time 0 for two. Rebound was pulled down by Huff. Home run ball up ahead. Dangerous pass off the hands of Alcala. And it will go to Buckland. Set to check back into the ballgame, Ruiz. After a high scoring first quarter, just four total points scored here in this second quarter so far, almost two minutes gone by. Kirk will hand it off. Tilly, way out there, off the front iron, no good. Missed two free throws and then. Uh, Took one from way outside. Usually you see that not happen like that for a shooter, and Ruiz knocks it down. Normally, if you miss a couple of free throws, you try to get back to the rim and see something go in. Lynn, or excuse me, Stempert. No good. Rebound pulled down. Alcala. Ruiz threw it backside. It got through, but unable to finish it. That time was Melendez. And now we're in that sprint we were telling you about, plus the foul, Lucas Kirk. As I believe that foul gonna go on Cleason. As here you see inside, just caught just enough of that shoulder of Cleason for it to be one. Sixth foul on the Lancers. The sophomore on the line, one free throw coming for him here, can't get it to fall. Cleason had it poked free from behind. Kirk, no good, got a hand on it up top, did Alcala, and then Kirk gonna pick up the foul here. So that'll be the second on Kirk. 5.17 to go second quarter. Into the corner, thought about the three. Instead, we'll kick it out. Ruiz has gotten to the rim pretty well tonight. Can't get that one to fall, though. Home run ball up ahead. Colson Cook being tracked down. Layup is good. He's got five. Aces back up 15. Five minutes to go here in the second quarter in Spearville, the 8-9 matchup. Winner gets Meade on Tuesday. Side out, now to Ruiz. Werner with it. We'll give it off up top, Melendez now. Spearville's got everybody standing on one side of the floor. Now they get Ruiz, open jumper. Not gonna fall for him. Rebound on the floor, second attempt. Stempert rejected it. Up ahead, Tilly. Werner coming after him and he's gonna foul him. So Werner will pick up what I believe is his first, and it will put Caden Tilly back to the free throw line. Seventh team foul on the Lancers. Buckling committed three. Tilly back to the line for two more. He's two for four from the stripe tonight, 31% on the year. That one off the back iron, no good. 
Bowman back in, and then Metling as well, along with Derek Alcala. Ian Melendez will take a seat there. 4.19 to go, second quarter. Able to get that one to go down is Tilly. He's got three tonight. We'll kick it into the corner. Thought about it. Not going to take it. Instead, we'll kick it out. Alcala up top. Ruiz, nice move. Had it stripped away. Stemper. And then threw it into no man's land. Kicked ahead. There was no whistle for the kick. Ruiz inside. The big man going to work on Lindsay. Can't get it to fall. And a lot of contact. Out of bounds. No whistle. And it's going to... Go to Buckland, and now the official is going to come together and talk about it. And they're going to change the call. It's going to go to Spearville. And I believe they got it right. One into the corner. Spearville's crowd was looking for a foul. Didn't get it. Results in a turnover. Cook dumped it backside. Linz, or excuse me, Stemperts layup. No good. But Caden Tilly right there for the follow. And it's going to lead to a full Spearville timeout. The Aces have stretched it out to 18. 3.36 to go second quarter. 29 to 11. Buckland on top. Twenty-nine to eleven, aces on top of the Lancers here. Six different guys have scored for Buckland. Four for the Lancers. Nobody with more than four. Cleason with four. For Spearville, they'll get it into the middle here. Outside, thought about the three. Not going to take it though. Almost a trap in the corner. Ruiz lost it. Saved it underneath. Huff got it. He's got five. And Spearville has been hurt tonight by Buckland's speed with them getting out and running in transition as Buckland hurts almost everybody that they beat. They'll go inside. That one poked free, stolen away Ruiz. Will throw it up ahead, just threw it a little bit too far there for Derek Alcala. Bowman will get it into the middle. Lindsay will look to go inside. Hop steps through and scores. It was 20 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. Aces have put 11 up this quarter. Spearville 6. They'll skip it backside. Ruiz off the back iron. No good. Rebound Huff. Got another one. He's got 7 tonight for Spearville. We'll go inside. Stamper dumped it underneath, but it was poked free. Coming through to get a piece of that one was Alcala, and then Buckland stole it back. Cook dumped it off. Couldn't finish, though, could Stamper. And then he uh, got his own board, put it back up and in. Oh, 
to the corner, deflected, they'll go right back inside. Big man with a shot fake up, no good from Metling. Bowman had it poked free, but he's going to be able to track it down. Buckland now with numbers. Cook. Tilly, top of the key, left side. Andrew Bowman going to let a three fly. Off the back iron, no good. Long rebound, pulled down. Home run ball, Ruiz being tracked down. Tilly almost got it. He might have got a piece of it. Here comes Buckland in the blink of an eye. Stemper. It was halfway down, and it came back out. That foul going to go on Alcala. It's his first. Stemper, it's going to rattle it home. He's got five. Nobody for Buckland has more than eight, and that's Lucas Kirk. But nobody for Buckland has less than five, and uh, six guys have scored. Stemper, no good. Lindsey got a piece of it. And now Spearville looking to run. Ruiz and Bowman going to pick up the foul. So Andrew picks up his first. It'll be the fourth team foul on Buckland. Now to trigger it in, Alcala. Ruiz. Isaiah Pierce in the ballgame for Buckland for the first time tonight. Ruiz got him in the air. Jumper might have got deflected by Lindsey. Stepper will get it off Cook. He'll go right side now with it. Andrew Bowman up top. Cook into the corner. Pierce catching fire. Off the front iron, no good. Got his own board. Dumped it off. Lindsey flushes it. Pierce going to pick up the blocking foul there. Hit the deck hard. As here you see, Lindsey, the power dribble. We'll give it to him. White man dunk. He'll throw the lob inside. Lindsey deflected it. He'll bring it up the floor himself. We'll skip it up top. Andrew Bowman inside, dumped it off Lindsay. Outside, Isaiah Pierce. Quick ball movement from Buckland there. And then he threw it away, threw it right to Ruiz. Bowman's tracking him down, just going to let him have the layup. Andrew Bowman inside. Oh, my mama almost made it. I thought he was going to pass it. With two, up ahead, got it off, did Huff. Just a little bit short, it was on line. And uh, just a reminder, folks, do not leave at halftime. Do not leave for this halftime. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Grant Newhold will get on with us. There's a bill going to Keisha to be able to keep, uh, like, NFHS basically from having exclusive contracts in the postseason. And Grant's going to come on and with us and talk to uh, talk to you all and let us know how we can help to uh, be able to cover your kids when it matters the most. So Grant Newhold going to be on with us back in about a minute, minute and a half. And uh, we will have Grant Newhold on to talk with us about that. 36-17, your halftime score here. Halftime show coming up right after this. This is KCMC Sports. Tech moving into Chase County. Overall, what it has done is essentially given us access to anything that you can have in town. We can be on the same level as everybody in the world because we have the internet to do it at the high speed and it won't just sit there and spin all the time. Having internet service and the relationship that we're building with Idea Tech is really important to our family because we want to be able to grow the farm and this is the type of thing that makes somebody willing to come back to rural America. We hire teachers seeking opportunities to grow in a school district with culturally diverse backgrounds. Our starting salary is in the top 5% of the state, 
and we have mentoring and training programs for proven success in the classroom. Join young professionals who have found success and a sense of community in Dodge City. Learn more at usd443.org slash employment. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. 36 to 17 is your halftime score here. And Buckland leads it behind six different players scoring at least five points. Lindsay with eight, Lucas Kirk with eight as well. And at this time, we'll welcome you into our quote unquote broadcast booth here. Grant Newhold is along to my left. And Grant, this is something that's going to the Senate that there's a bill that is going to basically try to keep NFHS and other entities like that from being able to have exclusive contracts when it matters the most for the state tournaments and playoff stuff. And just you want to talk a little bit more about that and what everybody can do. Yeah, so what I found out just last night, luckily Open Spaces Sports who covers all of Western Kansas, um, has put out a really in-depth post about this information. Um, it was actually your mother that brought it to my <laughs> attention last night. Um, and so what this is going to do is uh, bring a bill about that will allow us to actually cover postseason play. Uh, we have get gotten locked out in the last few years from the NFHS contract so that we cannot continuously cover the kids into the postseason because of that contract. So if a school has an NFHS uh, subscription contract, we are locked out. And so what this Senate bill is, is a way of allowing us to continue to cover the kids and follow them into the postseason and not have NFHS have that exclusive. Yep. And uh, so if, uh, let's say, people at home want to help get involved and be able to uh, let their voice be heard because the vote's on Monday. Yes. And so if they don't want to have to drive up and actually be a part of the meeting, what's something that they can do to be able to help with that? Yeah, so that hearing is taking place on Monday around 1.30 in Topeka. And, yeah, not a, not everybody can just take off and go to voice their opinion, but you can email the, the Senate committee members who are in charge of that. Again, the information that I got came off of the Open Spaces Sports Facebook channel, uh, and then I shared that from KCMC Sports and also the Kiowa County Media Center Facebook page as a way for people to find that information and go figure out how you can actually go and make your voice heard. If you would allow us to go into the postseason with your players, we want to be able to cover this kind of activity all the way through. And so what this will do is allow you to have your voice heard whenever it comes time to allow us into those spaces and um, make sure the Senate knows that you would like coverage from KCMC Sports or Open Spaces Sports rather than being stuck with that robot cam in the top that may have audio, may have a score. Uh, if you're lucky, you have to pay for that subscription, and uh, it's basically forcing people to pay for a horrible quality whenever their kids are in the biggest games of, uh, of the season, and we want to be there with them. Yeah, we want to do just what we're doing here going forward. So, again, Open Space of Sports on Facebook. We have shared it from KCMC Sports, the Kiowa County Media Center. You can go there, find all of the info that you need, fill out the forms, fill out whatever you need to do to make your voices heard to be able to let people like us do what we love to do and to be able to bring you the coverage that we're bringing. Yeah, I mean, we we obviously really, really enjoy this. It's a passion of ours, but we're also educating students. I mean, we have students up here with us today uh, that are doing some of this broadcasting with us, and we take a lot of pride in bringing those students with us. Hey, you guys. You would come back, come on, and so people can see. It's not Cameron and I <laughs> by ourselves up here, landing. landing we are full-time employees, but we have student base that comes with us and gets education for doing exactly this: sports broadcasting. The industry is exploding, and these kids are getting this education. And when it comes time to postseason, they have to stay at home and not get to come do this with us. And we don't get to do it either. And we're stuck with the NFHS network quality. And I think most people are familiar with that. And we're hoping that can change by you using your voice to say you want that to change. So, again, I couldn't have worded it any better myself. And the kids love coming and doing this. We love, we love being able to bring this to you. And it's with all the sponsorship that we've gotten all week long that we can tell you guys love it too. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, here, thanks, guys. Those are also everybody 
Ryland Tedder is running He's the camera run the camera that's for behind us. us. <laughs> yeah. And about three and a half minutes to go until the start of the, the third quarter here in Spearville. 36 to 17. Grant, thank you for coming on with us. Absolutely. Second half action coming up after this. I'm Cameron Burney. That was Grant Newhold. This is KCMC Sports, and we will be back for the second half in about three and a half minutes. Welcome back in, the ladies and gentlemen. 36 to 17, and Buckland there has a lot to cheer about. They lead it 36 to 17. Spearville on the other side, the home team, brought their whole student section, as you would imagine, standing in front of them there. 36 17, your halftime score. Buckland has six guys score, and all six guys put up at least five points. So the wealth being spread around there. For the Aces on the other side, for Spearville, four guys score. Nolan Huff leads the way with seven. Cleason's got four. Ruiz has four. And Metling has two. Spearville going to start the second half with us. And then for Buckland, Tilly, Stemper, Bowman all with five to go in with Cook's five. Lindsay and Kirk both with eight. Second half underway here. Ruiz going to start the second half much like he ended the first, attacking the basket. Cook will give it back to Stempert. Inside layup, no good. The senior, Buckland's leading scorer, has gotten to his spot a lot in this one and just unable to knock it down once he gets in there. That's going to be a turnover and will go to the Red Aces. Bowman will bring it up. Five points in the first half for him. Cook is tied for the lead with the scores with Lindsay. Stolen away by Ruiz. Two on one. He's going to take it himself. Flipped it up. No. The follow. No. Third chance for Spearville. No. And Bowman 
will bring it up here for Buckland. These two teams play lightning quick. Lucas Kirk, no good. Here we go, folks. It's a sprint, but it's a four-quarter sprint. He went to go behind the back. And uh, Coach Applegate not happy with that there from Ruiz. Alcala is set to get it in here. We'll do so to Huff in the corner. That one, gonna be an offensive foul. The official changed his mind about three times after he blew the whistle. It was gonna be a charge, then it was gonna be a block, then it was gonna be a charge again, and we'll see if we get a look at it here. As, yeah, kind of with the official on that one. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, probably a charge. Gotta blow the whistle. Stempert just took the charge. Now in a bad spot, we'll get it off Lucas Kirk. We'll kick it outside. Andrew Bowman, 6.40 to go, third quarter. The winner of this game gets Meade on Monday night in Dodge City. Or excuse me, on Tuesday night in Dodge City. Out of bounds, gonna stay with Buckland. Thirty-six seventeen. Kirk will get it off the big man in the corner. Jaron Lindsay had eight in the first half. Walked with it. Took an extra step getting inside. Six fifteen to go. Third quarter. Thirty six seventeen. Aces with the lead. Inside out, three ball on the way, too hard. Long rebound though, tracked down by Kressler. Stolen away. Bowman wanted to throw it deep, smartly not going to. Instead he'll hesitate, go all the way inside, dumped it off to Lindsay at the last second, and he scored it. He's got 10, and the lead's all the way up to 21 now for Buckland. One deflected, but Ruiz will track it down. 5.40 to go, third quarter. Thought about the three and said, we'll skip it backside. Alcala into the corner now. Looking to go underneath. Huff was set up there. Kressler lost it, stolen away, up ahead. Lucas Kirk trying to track it down. Will do so, his layup's good. 40 to 17. Stempert read it the whole way he stole it. It's a two on one, make it a three on one. Took it himself, no good, but he'll go to the line for two. Foul gonna go on Ruiz. His second, second team foul on Spearville here in the second half. Five oh seven to go, Buckland leads it by 23. One. Going to knock it down with the senior, Danny Alcala, along with Werner into the ball game, and Ian Melendez for Spearville. As Coach Applegate looking for some lineup that will work against Buckland here in the second half, run and gun. That one no good. It was 36-17 at half, so Buckland... 5-0 run here to start the second half in the first three minutes. Werner will get it off here. Melendez outside. Ruiz open for three. No good off the front iron. Stempert pulls down the board. Shook off Kirk. He wanted to throw it to him. Instead, he'll go Colson Cook inside all the way in. Hit the deck hard. Layup is good from Cook. And he will uh, pop up here. Is that one loose on the floor? Lindsay comes away with it. We'll get it off Bowman. Forty-three, seventeen. Kirk inside had it stripped, but a foul first. Foul going to go on uh, Werner. It'll be his second.
Buckland looking to get it in. They have everybody staying way back, and they found Stempert right underneath their own basket. They had guys standing all the way back by half court on an inbounds play. And it leads to a wide open bucket from Stempert, and he'll pick up a foul there. Forty-five, seventeen, nine-zero run to start here for Buckland. Caden Tilly back into the ball game. Get in. Cook went for the steal. Didn't get it. Dumps it off. Open jumper. Alcala no good. Long board. Cook will track it down. Saved it dangerously under Spearville's basket, but Spearville was already getting back on defense. Bowman up top. Cook. We'll get downhill, dumped it off. Lindsay, the reverse layup is good. He's got 12. Buckland stretched it to 30. That one. Runner, nice move from Ruiz. I'll tell you what, if Buckland is shooting this well and, run, and playing this good come uh, Tuesday night, they may give me to run for their money. Stemper, no good. Lindsay the follow, no. Caden Tilly poked it free, will get it out. Colson Cook was rushed on that one as Melendez got a hand in his face, but still let it fly up ahead. And Ian Melendez, his first basket of the night. Bowman, stripped on the way through. Spearville looking to run, will do so. Werner going to go all the way inside. Offensive foul, Tilly set up for the charge. And Coach Applegate is livid. And I think he's got a point, Tilly turned at the end. So Rui, or excuse me, Werner picks up his third Applegate, still letting the official hear it. You know, sometimes coaches will get after an official to try it. Sometimes coaches will uh, make their voice heard a little bit extra, trying to get teed up maybe to put some life into a crowd or into a team to get them back into it. And I almost wonder if that's what Eli was trying to do there. He got a warning, did not get teed up, and if he's going to get it, his chance is going to be right here with the official that made the call standing in front of him, but he looks like he's going to move on and accept the warning. Tilly pulled down the board, going to race up ahead, no look pass. Kirk's layup, no good. Ruiz dumped it off, jumper, no good. Tilly pulls down the board. Buckland looking to run again. That foul going to be on the floor. And Melendez will pick it up. It'll be his second. The fifth foul on Spearville here in the third quarter. 2.03 to go. Buckland lead by 26. That one going to be a foul on Metling, reaching around the back. Bowman looking to get it in. We'll just go safety valve to Tilly. We'll get it off Lindsay here, top of the key. They left the big man open. Three ball, no good. Ruiz going to get inside, dumped it off, saved underneath Bowman. Looking to run two on one, going to take it himself, layup is good. He's got seven tonight. The defender just never got over there, and he just kept it himself the whole way. Three ball in transition, no good. And now this is the game Buckland wants to play. How fast can you run? Kirk had it stripped away underneath Ruiz. Now they're going to come right back. Aiden split the defenders, reverse is good. (laughs) 
till he walked, or excuse me, that Bowman walked with it. It's here you see right between the two defenders, right in the soft spot. And able to get the reverse to go down. Melendez will back it out. Pierce into the ballgame, guarding him for Buckland. Going to be a double dribble there on Metling. Fifty-seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. Aces lead it by 26. Andrew Bowman will kick it outside. Tilly thought about the three, going to get inside. We'll kick it out. Tilly outside. Bowman open for three. Buries it. Bowman's got ten. It's the third guy in double figures tonight for the Red Aces. They have four guys that average double figures. That one deflected up in the air. Lindsey stole it. Up ahead, Lucas Kirk. Layup's good. He's got 12. Behind the back move, inside out, open three. Melendez no good with five. With three, shot up, and it's going to go down to end the half there for Caleb Cox, his first bucket of the night. But Buckland leads it by 29, going to the fourth quarter. The Aces looking to run away with this thing. Eight minutes remaining. They're looking to go on to play the number one seeded Mead Buffaloes back after this on KCMC Sports. Fourth quarter just getting started here in Spearville. Buckland leads it by 29. We're one point away from entering the 30-point running clock. Or as our producer Grant Newhold likes to call it, turbo clock. As now the officials talking about something on the side. A book got passed down. And I'm trying to look to see who might be in the ball game for the first time, and I don't think anybody is. And um, I guess we're ready for play. Okay. It's been an interesting day for this officiating crew, to say the least. Kirk. Inside out, Pierce now over Caden Tilly. Buckland starting the fourth quarter with their two main leaders on the bench and Lindsey and Bowman. Tilly three ball, misses everything. That one poked free, but a foul call going to go on Pierce as Werner was headed inside. Going to be on the floor. Just the second foul called on Buckland in this second half. And the second on Pierce today. Six fouls called on Spearville. Huff to trigger it in. 
We'll do so underneath that will get trapped. Kicked it out. Thought about the three, did Werner. Werner. No good. Got his board, though. We'll kick it out. Ruiz open for three. No good. Tapped out of bounds. Going to go to Buckland. Oh, going to stay with Spearville. Got to be close to a five count, and it finally is. And I'm not sure that that one would have been uh, anything other than a turnover anyway as the fade route down the right sideline. 7-12 to go, fourth quarter, 29-point ball game. Kirk. That one poked free, but a foul call. Ruiz going to pick that one up. That's going to be free throws now. A one and one coming here for Colson Cook. On the year, Cook, just a 56% free throw shooter. Got that one, though. And once the ball gets inbounded, we've entered 30-point running clock. And there they will start the clock now. So that is correct that 30 points and the clock will run. The only thing that will stop it is timeouts. And I, I'll be honest, I don't know if Spearville scores, if they cut it to less than 30, then if we're back to normal clock rules or not. People to my left are shaking their heads. No, that's not the case. End of the ball game for Buckland. First time tonight, Leighton Conradi. And the senior, Garen Stempert, will come off to an ovation. Ahead, Ruiz will be fouled. And now into the ballgame, Andrew Bowman going to come in here. And Lucas Kirk will come out. Buckland just eight total guys on the bench here today. As Darius McKenzie, the seventh man for them, out today with a sprained ankle. Don't know if they'll have him back for, Lee, for the uh, league tournament or not in Dodge City. They'll get it in, Tilly. Will drive in, had it poked free, got it back. Saved it, but he was laying out of bounds when he did so. Tilly, five points for him tonight. The crossover there from Werner inside. We'll kick it out. Ruiz thought about the three, not going to take it inside. Tilly going to pick up the foul. Five oh five to go and counting here. Two free throws coming for Ruiz. That one going to rattle out for Aiden. Jaron Lindsay into the ballgame. Colson Cook will come out. And then into the ballgame here for Spearville. Looks like it's going to be Danny Alcala along with Ian Melendez. Four and a half to go in this one. We're in turbo clock. 30-point lead for the Aces. They will move on to play Meade. An offensive rebound dumped underneath. Outside open for three. Off the back iron, no good. Andrew Bowman the rebound. We go this Leighton Conradi. Isaiah Pierce inside out. Jaron Lindsay. Reverse layup is good for the big man. He's got 14 tonight, right at what he averages on the year. Leads 32, Ruiz out of bounds, going to stay 
with Spearville. As now into the ballgame, uh, Layson Wheaton. For the first time tonight for Spearville. The freshman. Open three, left side, no good. Leighton Conrad, he pulled down the board. He'll get his name in the stat book. Inside out, Andrew Bowman walked with it. As Lucas Kirk will check in, and Lindsey and Bowman will come out here as Cook in as well. So the three main scorers for the Red Aces now on the bench, three minutes to go, up 32. Inside out, open three, no good. Rebound pulled down by Tilly, went behind the back. Gonna slow it down here, we'll get it to Kirk. Colson Cook. Will come inside, runner is good from Cook. He's got 10. He's the fourth red ace in double figures tonight. Let's go along with Andrew Bowman, Jaron Lindsey, and Lucas Kirk. Little runner, no good. Tilly pulls down the board. Took it all the way inside and laid it up and in. He's got seven. Had Conrady open in the corner. I think everybody on Buckland's side was hoping he was going to dish it out to him. Jumper, no good. Tilly pulls it down. He'll hand it off Kirk. Pierce looking to get inside. Layup, no good. Isaiah Pierce just six points scored on the year. Leighton Conradi in the ball game, only one field goal for him so far this year. Three ball, off the mark, no good, long board. Tilly tracked it down and then threw it into no man's land. Got his man in the air, layup up and good there. Danny Alcala's got his name in the stat book. Into the corner, Leighton Conradi, no good. Ruiz, 60 seconds to play. Cox dumped it off underneath. And a foul call going to go on Colson Cook. Forty-two seconds to go. Danny Alcala on the line here. Four two shots at it. One going to be off the mark, no good. 24-point lead, and now into the ballgame. Parker Reinerson for Spearville. Second free throw from Alcala. Rattles out, no good. Kirk pulls down the board. We'll work back to the left on Melendez, and we'll just bring it up. Gets it to Tilly. Kirk will hold it with eight. Back to Tilly. And they'll come top of the key, Pierce. And that one going to go out of bounds. And Coach Derek Bevan not happy <laughs> as 34-point win, and they throw it away to end the game. Buckland, you see there, most of that the girls' team. They are the two seed going to the league tournament. They will play Monday, but the guys' bracket is complete. 61 to 27, your final here. You see the Red Aces led by Jaron Lindsay with 14, head coach Derek Bevan and coach Applegate. Right there, a lot of respect between those two coaches. Buckland wins it 61 to 27, and there you see the updated bracket for the rest of the week. Buckland advances. And then in the other games that were not here, South Central beats Ashland, and then uh, Mineola defeats Ingalls. So two quote-unquote upsets. The nine beats the eight, and the ten beats the seven. First game on Tuesday in the main bracket will be at 3 o'clock South Gray and South Central, the 4-5 matchup.
but we're done in Spearville, the play-in games. The bracket is fully complete now. So uh, we will have games for you all week long in Dodge City. Your final score here one more time tonight on the guys' side. Kiowa County defeats Satana 62-43, and then Buckland defeats Spearville 61-27. Again, a massive thank you to all of our sponsors that have made it possible for us to not just come to Spearville for the first time with our full setup, but to be able to take as much of a crew as we can to Dodge City for the entire week. So once again, folks, I'm Cameron Burney. For Grant Newhold, Landon Eilert, Tanner and Kaysen Fulton, and Ryland Tedder, those guys were all running cameras. Grant Newhold was producing. I'm Cameron Burney. Thank you so much for being with us these last couple of days. And one final time from Spearville, we will see you Monday morning, 1130 first tip in Dodge City. I'm Cameron Burney. Thanks for watching. This is Spearville. Good night.